Many healthcare professionals will find themselves considering travel healthcare assignments as an intriguing career option at one point or another. However, things can get a little confusing when it comes to the travel healthcare compensation package. This is because the travel compensation package is much different than permanent compensation packages. For example, the travel healthcare compensation package includes housing, meals and incidental expenditure stipends, travel stipends, medical benefits, license and certification reimbursements, rental cars and hourly rate, and more. To compound the confusion, you'll receive a dizzying array of often contradictory explanations, sales pitches, and recommendations from everyone you talk to. From recruiters, you'll hear things like, we have free housing, we'll pay your travel expenses, we pay the highest stipends, and we'll pay a bonus. And from fellow travel healthcare professionals, you'll hear things like, small companies pay more, your stipends are too low, and my company pays more. And this can go on and on. To make sense of it all, you need an idea of what's going on behind the scenes. You need a plan. First, you need to know that nothing is free. For example, agencies will routinely tell you that you can have free housing or you can have a $2,000 stipend. You can have free medical benefits or you can have a higher hourly rate. You can have a free rental car or you can have a higher hourly rate. It's better to view these variables as services that agencies can provide for a price. When we accept that, then it becomes clear that the travel healthcare compensation package is like a pie. No, not that kind of pie, this kind of pie, a pie chart. You see, each benefit or compensation variable should be viewed as just one slice of the pie. And you should avoid focusing on any one slice of the pie and instead determine the total value of the pie. Because determining the total value of the pie is the only way to accurately compare competing compensation packages which will be quoted to you in different ways. Now, in order to fit everything into a pie chart, we need to break everything down to a common denominator. The problem is that agencies often quote the compensation variables in different denominations. For example, housing stipends are quoted by the month, meals and incidental expenditure stipends are often quoted by the week, and travel stipends are often quoted as a total value for the entire contract. So the common denominator here is time and we want to break everything down to an hourly value. To do this, we're going to start with a travel assignment's time variables. These include the hours per shift, hours per week, weeks in the contract, and the total number of hours in the contract. For example, the standard travel nursing contract is for 12 hours per shift, 36 hours per week, 13 weeks, and 468 hours. Once you have the time variables for the contract you're evaluating, you can run your calculations for the quote you receive. Let's look at an example. In this case, let's assume this is a standard travel nursing contract for 12 hours per shift, 36 hours per week, 13 weeks, and therefore 468 total hours. Now, if we received a quote for $28 per hour as a base rate, plus $250 per week for a meals and incidental expense stipend, plus $700 total for travel expenses, and $2,000 per month for a lodging stipend, then we can break everything down to an hourly figure using the contract's time variables. The base rate would remain $28 per hour, divide $250 by 36 hours per week for $6.94 per hour, divide $700 by 468 hours for $1.49 per hour, multiply $2,000 by three months and divide by 468 hours for $12.82 per hour. Remember, there are 4.3 weeks in a month and 13 weeks is three months. Finally, add everything together for a total value of $49.25 per hour. Now we have a plan that lets us compare and contrast the value of competing compensation offers. Finally, when gathering your information, it's important to ask the right questions to make sure you get the information you need. Don't ask what's the rate or how much does it pay. These questions lead only to confusion. For example, you may be told only part of the total rate. Instead, let recruiters know what services you want and ask them to quote a rate providing a value for each variable. Remember, different agencies will pay in different ways. For example, some agencies will offer higher stipends and lower rates. But if you use this approach, then you'll always be able to make accurate comparisons. And in the end, 
you'll be able to get more pi. You'll be able to differentiate bigger pies from smaller pies and get the kind of pie that you want. If you found this presentation helpful, then you'll love our free ebook on how to negotiate the best travel healthcare compensation packages. It's got over 50 pages of basics, methods, and tips to help you negotiate great deals every time. Visit blog.bluepipes.com slash negotiate to get your free copy. You can share your questions and comments with us and get more information on our blog, blog.bluepipes.com, on Facebook at facebook.com slash bluepipesinc, on Twitter at bluepipesinc, or subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great videos. And as always, have a safe and productive travel healthcare adventure.